sophisticated ignorance. Look, if you want the game, then you have to slide into his DMs. That's the only way that's gonna happen. I don't think anybody ever answers my DMs. You know, all these other girls always show how much success that they have. And every time I hit up a guy, I'm always just left on red. And a lot of people like to leave me on red. <clears throat> But you know, I've, I, don't, I don't know why I've, you're coughing because I'm feeling under the weather, so I don't know why you're coughing. I <laughs> don't leave you on red, don't do that. I didn't say you did, but if you have a guilty conscience, then just let it out. I'm just saying, sometimes I've been left on red, like sometimes I just don't read the message. I that's different than being left Ooh. on red, like I feel like that's so rude. So let's review so this case is where you don't read the messages, yet you get mad when you're left on red. Make it make sense. That's different. That's different. Okay. If I don't know what the message, if I don't know what the message is saying, how can no? When somebody opens up a message and you're left on red, that's a blatant. Yeah, fuck you. I'm ignoring you. That's not necessarily the case. Sometimes they hundred percent the, the gates. Me- nope. Sometimes they may see the message and not have the time to respond in that moment. Yeah, that's and happened they- to me before on WhatsApp. I open it on the floor and then boom, somebody's right. coding. Exactly. So it's not necessarily yeah, someone's ignoring you. But it, majority of the time, it's people ignoring me, especially with DMs and iMessage. Well, then you need to reevaluate what's happening. My friendships? Okay. Correct. Got there it. it is. All right. Maybe I need new friends. Maybe you do. Ones that will read your messages and answer at an appropriate time frame. Thankfully, we should talk about that one day. Thankfully, you have me. You chose violence again. You always leave me on red. But anyway, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here Can't we be are. proven. Can't be proven. Okay. And that's the moral of the story. <sighs> hey, friends. Hey, gang. Hey, squad. Uh, welcome to yet another episode of the program, the podcast, the show, uh, which your boy, BJ. And it's the effervescent Roe V here on the ones and the twos. Oh, you're a DJ now. You didn't you know? What would be your DJ name? Scooker, scooker, scooker. My not, DJ that's name. Whoa, that's no. not a what? I thought that's that not was, how you scratch? I thought that was your DJ name. DJ Skirt Skirt Skirt. <laughs> I was definitely scratching into my intro. Hey, you don't even know how to DJ. Wow. I don't. My DJ name would be Super Duper Rovi. DJ Super Duper Rovi? Yeah. Now, would you be a DJ Khaled type DJ or more of like a DJ Envy type DJ? Like DJ mm-hmm. by name, but they don't really DJ, you know what I mean? Or they do, but kind of not. I'd be DJ Khaled. You want to be the one screaming. What would be a catchphrase? Ooh, you need a catchphrase that's that, that type of DJ. <laughs> I'm evolving! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that, was, that was good. That was so good. That was so good. Uh, There's yeah. no way that will ever get old. It will never, never get old. Well, once we get the trademark on that, we'll be making some type of coinage. But until then, <laughs> um, we're evolving. I don't. I don't it doesn't sound wow. Good no, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, no it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's, it's, it's the same. Yeah, that's all. You, you need your own. I, I think. Take some time. I'll think about my catchphrase later. But for now, <laughs> uh, thank you all for joining us on another episode. Hope we're all doing well out there. Uh, this episode is going to be a fun one. Oh, is it? We're going to take a break from talking about the nonsense of the outside world. And we are going to allow all of you to get to know us better with, uh, yeah, by answering personal questions about ourselves. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yay. It's going to be the get to know us episode. Mm. The Virgo in me is so happy. Oh, I know you're lying. And that's what <laughs> makes us ever much more excited. Um, because you, my dear, are not going to reveal any information about yourself. And I am proverbially an open book. So this is going to be a good time. Are you saying I'm a closed book? Oh, big clothes. Lock and key. 
You're like one of those journals from back in the 90s that need a little key to open. <laughs> and at this point, the key is lost. So now you're using a damn butter knife to try to appear that to <laughs> I'm slowly cringing. All right. Well, as long as you're cringing by answering the questions. You know, this is big of me. This is why my, my catchphrase is I'm evolving. So here we are. Here All we right. are. Here well, we are. You better transmute real fast because these questions are coming at you. They're going to be soft. Some of them are going to be very hard. But hopefully we have some fun with this and the audience gets to know me and you better. Yeah, uh, and shout out to all the Virgos who are listening. Yeah, okay. Um, so, Ooh. you know my relationship with Virgos. It's very uh, love, hate, hate. That, that's your choice. That is my right. So anyway... Um, <laughs> let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. So this is how this is going to work. Um, there is a list that we've been using for past episodes about uh, multiple questions uh, that are personal. And I mean, these are all like icebreaker questions in order to get to know someone, but we've been using it as a means of like answering questions about ourselves. So you, the audience gets to know us. So now we're going to dedicate a full episode to these questions. Um, I have a random number generator uh, that's set up to where I would not be choosing the questions. This thing will. Ooh. Ooh. And um, there's going to be no reshuffling. There's going to be no second guessing. No matter what the question is or how crazy the question is, we're going to answer it honestly and truthfully. So are you ready, Roby? I am cautiously ready. Good. All right, let's do this. Uh, all right. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm always ready. Oh. oh. So Ooh. our first question okay. is, oh, baby. See, I, you know what? I know the reason why you don't like this is because you need to control everything. And right now, <laughs> you don't have any control of this at all. This is beautiful, y'all. If y'all know Rovi, y'all know that this is be outside of her wheelhouse. So this is good shit. I'm freaking out. All right. So <laughs> uh, here is the question. Question number one is, oh, yeah. <clears throat> what is the saddest thing about your life that nobody knows? Oh, we are starting off with the, the fun questions. <laughs> the saddest thing in my life that nobody knows is that I what is the saddest thing? No, there's nothing sad in my life actually. Roby. <laughs> the whole point of this exercise is to be honest and transparent. So far so bad. <laughs> This is like therapy. You know what? I'm going to allow three passes, all right? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't choose this one. I didn't choose this one. But none okay. of us chose it, but I'm saying I'm going okay. to allow three passes throughout this episode. Okay. Okay? So you have three chances to pass. How about you go first in this one? You go first in this one. Do you have an answer, or you just told me to go first? No, no, I have an answer. All right, if you say so. Um, Promise. Saddest thing about my life that nobody knows. Um, I think one of the saddest things, I mean, people like know about, you know, I always talk about my parents on, on the show and I talk about the relationship and the lack of a relationship. Um, you know, I think, well, I mean, I don't know if everyone knows this or doesn't know this, but, you know, one of the, um, my, my mother, my mother was in a relationship with someone she was married with, uh, her last, her ex-husband at this point. And he was very abusive towards her. And it was really, really bad. And I don't think too much people know about that, but um, it's to the point where it got really physical. And I had no idea, not much of us knew what was going on. And um, there was the one day where I was talking to her and she revealed to me about what was going on. And that was probably one of the most heart, 
gut wrenching days of my life because, you know, it's like when, like, I love my mother so much. And I was in a position where I couldn't help her. And there was nothing that I could do in her situation where she was being abused by her husband. And it, it raised me. Like, I, it was to the point where I schemed on rolling up to that house after she, after she was able to like move out and, and go to somewhere else. I was going to roll up to the house like that in hand and fight this guy, like on some fight out in the street, like battle to the death type shit. I, I had this shit in my head. Um, unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, but that didn't happen. Uh, but I think the sad part about it is, is that I feel like, like I wanted him to get some level of, like I want to get some level of revenge and that didn't happen. And um, mm. there's sometimes where I think about what would I have done if I decided to like pull up to this house the time where I happened to be in that area because it was in Florida. If I had pulled up to that house and decided to like call him out and fight him in the streets. Because that's what my brain wanted. I wanted to fight him in the streets and I wanted to like beat his ass. And um, that didn't happen. And it sucks. I, I mean, granted, you know, it, was, it happened a while ago enough to where, you know, my mom is moving forward, but um, I think that, that a part of me always wanted to get that level of revenge and I never got it. And it sucks because it's like somebody put my, somebody put hands on my mom and I wasn't able to defend her. And um, yeah, that sucks. That was pretty sad. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Okay, your turn. It's not a contest, so you don't have to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm no, no, no. Well, it, it's a sad, sad moment. Um, I guess one of the saddest moments in my life um, is when I, my aunt died. Mm-hmm. She, she, she was my best friend. And I often think that if she was still alive today, that my life would totally be different. Like I love my mom and it was my mom's younger sister too. Um, Mm -hmm. Love my mom, but she was mom. There was things that I can tell my aunt that, you know, I couldn't tell my mom. Like we would just run off together and go like downtown Brooklyn. Like I remember, she just decided to go in a store and bought me a uh, super NES. And that was the highlight of my whole childhood. <laughs> like we just did random fun things together. And it wasn't even like, you know, anything extra. She was just like always around and it was just always pure. And I always regretted that she didn't have children. So I can say that's like my cousin, my sister, cousin, my brother, cousin, uh, kind of to have that legacy because she was gone at a very young age. Like she was on a mission trip in Haiti and and passed away from an asthma attack. And because they didn't have the resources to save her and get to her in time, she ultimately died from that. So that that crushed me till this day because she died like in March 30th. So it's it's still, it's still, triggers me sometimes and you know it was pretty sad pretty sad I could I couldn't console my mom my mom never thought her younger sister would die you know you know just tra- transitions of things you would think that your younger sister will outlive you you know right. anybody anybody younger than you was going to outlive you so it was a hard time I was 10 you know still it still affects me to this day so it was one of the saddest moments in my life well Thank you for sharing. It was tough. Granted, I didn't think that would be the, our first question of the show, but hey, you know. I think you definitely picked that one on I, purpose. I did not pick anything. I, I tell you, I have a number generator here that is picking the questions. I'm not picking anything. This is all up to chance. All right. All right. Let's get to our next question, shall we? Ooh, all right. That was uh, heavy. That was heavy. Mm-hmm. Let's let's hope the next one is not so heavy. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Let's hope that the next one's not so heavy. <laughs> uh, our next question is: What is the most ambitious thing you've attempted? Ah, <sighs> the most ambitious thing. Like in what aspect? Anything. 
anything that you would deem ambitious as in very grandeur? Like, I feel like going to school, going to medical school is grandeur, but it's just something that I felt like I had to do from like my parents' eyes and their standards. So what that that's why I don't hold it to the esteem as it's supposed to be. Like, everyone's like, oh, Dr. Anthony, I was like, I don't feel that yet. Well, still, I mean, to this you, day. but you achieved that though, right? It's but, not you attempted and let's say you, you know. Failed, I know. Failed I know. or didn't complete or something like that. But um, I have a, a, a fear of heights, right? Okay. I went to Antigua for a friend's birthday. And this was a requirement, you know, to get the photo ops of the zip lining. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. Yeah, 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 I'll do it. Climb, <laughs> climbed the stumps, climbed all the way up to the treetop. Everyone's going, woo, yeah, it's fun, woo, spinning upside down. And the whole time I'm climbing the stairs, I'm like, I can't do this shit. <laughs> I don't know why, why am I climbing the stairs? I, like, I'm gonna freak out. And you know, I'm, everyone's like, oh, you're gonna go row V? I was like, no, I'm gonna go last. Yeah, I'm going last. You know, that's all a part of my ploy to bail out and say, you know what? I'm just gonna go back down the stairs. So everyone goes and it's my turn. And apparently this is one of the longest um, zip lines uh, in the world or something, something like that. I, I what in the world? I, this is what the guy said, whatever, in uh, the Caribbean. Any, what a, anything Caribbean, to get your money. Anything, anything to, to get me to go mm -hmm. down because I was holding up the line. Ooh, there was a line. So I'm like, I can't do it. He's like, just jump. I said, jump. Jump to my death? Do you, first of all, do you know how much I weigh? I don't know how secure this, <laughs> this zip line is. I am just like thinking of everything possible. I was like, if I die, who's going to take care of nutmeg? What is my mom going to think? She's going to be like, I told you not to go to Antigua. <sighs> wow. At the end of the story, the only reason I got to go down the zip line was I tripped over the edge. I did. I still, in fact, did not force myself to jump. I tripped. Wow. Oh, thank God I was still hanging on to the um, zip line so I can actually go down the zip line. But I did not jump. I did not step off. I didn't do anything the instructors told me. But I simply just twisted my foot and I ended up down the zip line but that is our big accomplishment for me because afterwards it was okay but i could not get to jump off the ledge it was it was too much it may have been philosophical behind it there's something that was holding me back from taking that leap of faith because i always i always uh extra cautious with whatever i do whatever aspect of my life so Lord. it takes me a long time to actually jump dive in step off the ledge to to do something so okay well i'm happy you achieved that feat that that's big that's really big because you know i'm obsessed with death so you, got, you gotta stop well <laughs> the fact that, that you play in mortuaries or morgues or whatever <laughs> you you have a healthy relationship with that that's a lot for me? It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. I need to, yeah. That's that's between you and your spirit. That's not all. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine's is not as extreme. Um, one of the most ambitious things that I've attempted, so uh, as most of you probably know, or for those of you who do know, I'm a videographer, filmmaker, and there was one time where I attempted to make a series of short films. And I, okay. oh, okay, I don't know what <laughs> My phone's being a phone. Uh, I is that part of your short film? That is definitely not. Uh, mm -hmm. I attempted to create uh, a series of short films, uh, 26 short films exact, uh, based off of the alphabet. And that was supposed to be kind of like my claim to fame uh, in becoming an ultimate filmmaker. I got a few short films in 
And the last episode or the last film that I made uh, before I decided to give up was just way too much. Uh, it was so much involved. There was locations, talent. It went through different seasons, literally. It took months to make. It was a whole, it was just so much involved in making this one short film. And at that point, considering I was doing most of these things by myself, in the sense of like producing and getting things together, it was just way too much for me. I was like, you know what, I'm done. So I never got to finish that series, but it's probably the most ambitious thing that I attempted and never got to finish. But I'm proud of me at least sticking about it and, and trying to get it done. So. Okay. The series is on YouTube. For those who would like to watch it, you can hit me up and <laughs> see where everything went downhill. But, um, well, not downhill, but, you know. I thought you was going to talk about your, um, your rap career. We're just going to go to the next question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep, just an the next question. Here. It could have been an answer to your question. No? Yeah, we're not going to talk about my <laughs> extremely failed rap career in college. <laughs> what um, you mean failed? That was a good accomplishment. A lot of people... It? <laughs> was it though? I enjoyed it. Me, a lot. Me and my roommate attempted to, well, we didn't attempt, we made a mixtape uh, in college of three songs, uh, all of those songs being probably worse than the last. Um, at the time, it was dope. Oh, believe me, at the time, it was good times. Uh, so we were trying to be the hottest rap duo on campus. And well, you know what? We had to decide what was more important. And the answer is not doing that. So, um, yeah, you know, that, I wouldn't call that ambitious. That was just foolish. Oh, no, I think that was very ambitious because a lot of people. Who's a lot of people? Uh, I don't know. People that can't rap. No. Okay. Nobody, nobody was inspired by my, my 10 mile tail, okay? Nobody. So, yeah, we're going to leave that in the drafts. We're going to leave that in the past. We're not going to talk about my quote unquote very short lived rap career. Um, let's okay. get to the next question, sorry. Question is, what made you realize that your parents were just human like everyone else? <sighs> what made me realize my parents were human just like everyone else? Um, I gotta think of a time now. I think when I think one, it had to be one time when it was something to do with church. It was like the cotillion or something, <laughs> right? And then my mother was like pushing something. And then I came up with like a very, I can't, I can't even remember. I came up with something very logical. And I think that turned the switch around for her where I was like no longer child. I was like young adult. And I was like, well, if they want to do it like this, why don't they do it like that? And then she's like, you know, you have a point. And I was like, yeah. She's like, all right. And I was realized she was just like the, the, the church folk. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, well, guess what, lady? I'm going to question everything <laughs> in the future now and give you a rebuttal. Like, there's no more hush, hush, I'm right, you're wrong type of things. I'm going to express myself respectfully because I still don't want to get backhanded, but I'm going to express myself respectively. That's when I knew that she was human just like everyone else. I used to just hold everything my mother said like it was gold, like, oh yeah, it has to be this, it has to be that. Or she'll just go along with what other people said, like in the church, for example. And then I, when I questioned it, I was like, that doesn't seem right, mom. And then she's like, yeah, you're right. It doesn't seem right. So that's one, that's one way I realized she she wasn't, you know, she's human like the rest of everyone. You know, we make mistakes, we learn, we move on. Yes. I was glad that I was at an age that she could just respect me on that level because, you know, in a Caribbean household, if you talk back, yeah, that's it. Yeah. back chat is not allowed. Yep. Uh, for me, what was, the, I think there was multiple moments. Um, seeing my parents argue for like the first time, even when I was a kid, or not, actually when I got older, and when my parents would bicker, not let's mm. argue, but bicker. Uh, that's when I realized, oh, these two are just like any other couple that would argue or any other two people that just can't see eye to eye. 
know what I'm saying? Like most of us want to pay our parents ideally, even if their relationship is not perfect, but we want to paint them as all right, two people that could get along together and blah blah blah. But no, when they started bickering about stupidness or stupidness, it was like, oh, y'all just like everybody else that that be arguing over nothing. So, mm. you know, um, flaws are usually the things that make us see our parents differently. And then another thing that made me realize, so my parents' reaction, my parents' reactions to me going to therapy made me see them as just human, um, which is interesting because my dad had a reaction to me going to therapy completely opposite of my mom. Uh, and I expected my mom to be more open to therapy, but she wasn't. And my dad was actually more open to therapy. It was just like, whoa, this is not what I expected from these two. I was expecting the opposite, but um, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, that was a part, that was a moment where it's like, oh, these two are just people that have their own opinions and thoughts about things. And yeah, I, I just saw them in a different light at that point. Yeah, that, that transition is, is deep. It is deep. But it's good, it's good to feel, it's good to have that feeling where you could be at a point where, all right, you're not going to be exactly like your parents, but you're at least on a level to where you can like talk to them like anybody else and share things and stuff. That's, I appreciate that about my relationship with my parents, where I can have like open conversations with them without it feeling like I'm the child. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yep. That's so, exactly what it was. That is always a fun time. And when you get to that point, I mean, depending on your relationship with your parent, once you get to that point, it's a beautiful thing. I don't like the point where it's turned around now that I'm the adult, though. I'm the adult, and they have taken a secondary world. It's like I'm taking care of my parents now. I mean, that's that's <laughs> the it's like the age no, 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 no. They start taking care of you, and then the roles reverse, and then now you have to take care of them. I'm like, mom, um, what did you do with the potty cat? Oh, Rose, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> but guess what? How? That was that was you back in the day. <laughs> so look how the chickens come home to roost. Ooh, mm. all right. We don't like it when the when the shoes reverse, you know. I don't know. I hate that. 100%. Oh yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, next question on our little uh, adventure here: Who do you miss the most? Ooh. I think I, I, I answered that already. Did but you? I did. Okay. Well, is there but, another um, answer? Who do I miss the most? How is this uh, platonically, romantically? There's no specific. There's no specific. It's just who do you miss the most? Species wise, gender wise. Can you answer the question? <laughs> Instead of trying to get some context, who person do you miss the most? It depends on my mood. Not, Not my the mood. Role. Not my mood. Girl, it does because I'm a person who enjoys time alone. Who do you currently miss the most in this moment of time? Is no one a choice? Oh my god! Are you? Are, do you? Do you want to answer these questions, or you just want to deflect? <laughs> I'm not deflecting. I I promise this is not a deflection. So you okay. miss no one. You miss. I miss. I miss Vixen the most. Eh, try again. <laughs> Wrong answer. There's, wow, there's wow, how? How is that a wrong answer? Wrong answer, try again. But how How do you know that? Because I know this, because you just pulled a random name out of your mouth. No, I did not put a random name. I don't believe you, so. Why don't you believe me? Why right. can't you believe that I miss you the most? I thank you for missing me. Let's try another answer. I miss, I guess, my parents, my mom. Okay. My dad. That sounds more genuine. Wait, so Vixen wasn't genuine? I, I don't feel like it was. It's probably disingenuous, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That, there's the truth <laughs> I'm looking for. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> On the money. <laughs> well, fuck you for that. Because I thought I could miss, why can't I miss my friend? Dang. Okay. I'm not saying it's not dang, true. Just in that dang. moment, I don't feel like that was the answer. That was the answer, but dang, you made me all change right. it. All right. 
Fair enough. Actually, I miss all my friends. Shout out to my friends. Um, I miss you guys, all of you. Can, do they, can do we they shout to, outs? Do they listen to the show? I'm, okay, I was about to shout them out, but I don't yeah, know. Shout them shout out. Yeah, shout them out. Yeah, but shout out to or uh, uh, Played Out now. No? No, they're not. People still shout out people. That's the thing. Okay, I'm going to list all my friends. I want to list Tima, Chanel, Gail, Lee, Monique, Drea, Natalie, Sunday. I want to shout out Tony. I want to shout out Nadon. I want to shout out Jasmine. I want to shout out my girl, Jennifer. I want to shout out, um, what? No, no, no. Just let me know when you're done. That's all. Oh, okay. Um, I want to shout out my friend, Ben. I really like Ben. Ben's cool too. Uh, my friend, Jimmy. I have a lot of friends and I like to shout them out and that's it. Thank you for the very long shout out. Uh, I'm hoping that all these people are going to listen to the show. Yes. All the same people yeah. that you shouted out, you're going to be tagging them to this episode so they can listen, right? I think you set me up. How am I setting you up by doing what you should be doing? I mean, I think this conversation we needed to have outside of this uh, recording. I don't think that's how that works. That's. <laughs> I simply don't think that's how it works. All right. I'll answer the question now. Uh, who do I miss the most? Hmm. The, the, the answer should be right in front of your screen. There's like a name right there that you don't see it. The name in front of my screen. I was going to, I mean, unless it's the person behind me. That's not the point here. Um, so you're miss? choosing violence. You're choosing I'm not violence. choosing violence. You're choosing violence. I can't miss someone who I feel is always close. Yeah, but you could just say the name anyway. I could, but where's the fun in that? All right. Um, and, and I don't see. want to be too predictable here, you know? And the audience see. is only going to predict that I miss you, Ralph. No, no, it's too but late. I got to choose violence. It. I'm not yeah, choosing yeah. violence. That's fine. I don't know who I miss the most these days. Uh-uh. Uh, no. We're going to be very transparent here. On I said I don't, I don't know who I'm thinking. Can I think? Can a man's think? Go ahead. Uh, I would say someone who I miss is, mm, it's kind of hard. I mean, like, honestly, when I saw this question, I automatically thought about relationships, but I don't think I am in a position where I should miss these people. Not entirely. I mean, I miss the people who they are, or I guess I miss, you know, the essence of who they are, but I shouldn't be missing them because it's like I need to move forward, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't want to necessarily miss them. I miss, I miss my mom. Yeah. I, this it sounds like a safe answer, but I do miss my mom. I miss, I miss my mom. I miss my mom not more so now because I'm not with her every day. That, that's what it is for me. I mean, me and my mom talk often, but uh, I miss her presence, like physically being with her. Hopefully, yeah. uh, this summer coming up, I'll be able to visit her and we can hang out. I miss this, the little things. My mom annoying me, telling me that I shouldn't eat this or I should cook this a certain way. And I also, I also miss my cousins. I miss my cousins. We, um, we have a group chat. Sorry. We have a group chat going and there's some cousins I haven't seen in a long time. So I miss them too, for sure. Yeah, family. I miss family. Sometimes that's a thing. Are you ready for the next question, Rove? I am ready, ready, ready. Steady, steady, steady. All right. Don't know what any of that means, but um, all right. Our question is: What habits do you still have from childhood? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be truthful. <laughs> All right. So, as a kid, mm -hmm. um, I had um, a real problem eating my food if they touched. Mm. And I don't know, a part of me still. I'm trying to slowly let my food touch so, you know, 
I can get out of it, but I still separate and uh, compartmentalize my food a lot. So my vegetables cannot touch my rice. My meat can't touch the vegetables. I would prefer if there's gravy to just be on the meat and then I can take bites accordingly. That's just something, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Even when I was growing up, my mom had to buy the plates with the three separate um, <laughs> dividers and put my food there because I wouldn't touch the food. Like I was a brat, 100% brat. I um, used to tell my mom she would cook poison. Like I was horrible. Hope my kid don't turn out like me, but yeah, yeah, I was pretty bad. I would not eat this poison. Why is it mixed together? I don't want it. Don't get me on brown stew fish. Whew. The fact that she used to kind of fry it and then make a gravy and then put it on top with onions and peppers freaked the shit out of me. And How I was like, she? I'm never eating that. I'm never How eating that. How dare she cook for you? How dare you be picky? Craving kingfish now. Like, I'm, I'm horrible. But I have, I am evolving and I have been mixing my gravy with my rice. Like a big girl. Look at you. I'm a big kid now. That sounds condescending, but I would not, <laughs> um, would not retaliate because again, I am evolving. This is a slow transition for me, but I'm still transitioning. Mm -hmm. um, I am mixing my foods. Um, I do like to mix my drinks. That's one thing I would mix, but that's one childhood habit that, um, that I've had. Other than that, I was a pretty perfect child. Oh, pretty perfect. Eh? <laughs> All right. The answer is okay. You got it. Wow. All right. I can't argue with something that is based off of opinion. And that's that. So um, the habits that I have to, say, <laughs> um, to answer the question, uh, I feel that, you know, I still tend to find myself talking to myself a lot, like I used to when I was a kid. Uh, every time I would talk into a mirror, I would pretend like I am uh, the star of a TV show or a sitcom. So I still do that. I still talk to myself. Um, very like first camera narrative or like breaking the fourth wall, so to speak. Yeah, I do that to my, I do that ever so often. So that's still something that I do from childhood. It's fun, you know, treating life like a sitcom or a show and then just kind of just living it out. Okay, the answer is yes. Wow, you think I'm weird. Cool, cool, cool. cool, cool. No, 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 never said those words. I think that you are creative and imaginative. Wow. All right. I'm sure that's, yeah. a, that's code word is loaded with something, but we're just going to How is it loaded? I'm telling you what it is. I'm choosing peace and evolution. As you should every day. There it Especially is. today. Yep. Today of all days. Let's try another question, shall we? Uh, this question is, what is something you wish you could say to people but can't? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Woo, well, we have a half an hour left for the show, so please take your time. Take your time with this question. I'm pretty sure you have uh, so much responses. There's nothing that I really want to say that I haven't said to people. Oh, yeah, we know you. What do you mean? What? Whoa, what does that mean? It's the Virgo in you. You are very um, strong with your opinion, and you are not afraid to voice it to those right. who you voice it to. I, I pretty much say what's on my mind, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not one of those segments. But um, if I have to tell you something, I don't, I don't, I usually don't keep it in. You're going to get it from me. Mm -hmm. I think I do need to scale back and keep it in. That's one of my faults. So there is nothing that I ever withheld or did not want to say to somebody that I've never said, but I should start doing that. Being more, what's the word? Um, coy, subtle. I know these are foreign words to you, but you know. So, I don't know so, these words. So I don't know, it's a long way. 
I know none of these words. What is that? There's no tact here. Okay. <laughs> you get it. It is what it is. Straight, raw, hard, firm, all of those words. But yeah, I need to work on being a little bit, like you said, subtle and coy. You know? Uh, for me, um, I wish I could tell people when they're like dumb. Just oh. like when they're just dumb or ignorant or, I mean, that's more like calling out people, reading people. But yeah, I wish, I wish, um, oh wait, what well says, wish you could say to people, but can't, um, not won't. Oh, um, can't. Oh, okay. Well, that is different than won't. Things um, that I can't say, um, I can't curse out. I can't um, say, are you an idiot? I can't say, um, why are you doing that? You know, if somebody's doing like a, a procedure that is um, like we're in front of a patient, I can't be like, why are you doing that? Like right in front of them, but I can't say it, but I want to say it so badly because they're messing up a procedure right in front of the patient. I wish I could mm -hmm. tell some of my coworkers that, hey, look, I don't want to be bothered, leave me alone. I, I think I say that. It, it depends on my mood. But sometimes yeah. I'm just like, I don't want to hear from you right now. Or, oh my God, what do you want? Or just like, oh, all right, fine, I'll get to it, please. Just, just I, I do have to work these are on. Things, these are things that I wish I could say to my coworkers, but I can't because I don't want to be that person. And granted, I would, granted, I'm not usually that person, but I have my moments where I'm just like, I don't want to be bothered. I know what I'm doing. Please just leave me be and let me handle it. Uh, but I know that's just me kind of getting into my own head and realizing that, yes, it has to be a, a team effort in some cases. That's just me. There's some things that I don't, I can't, I can't bring myself to say. I don't know if it's just my mental block, but sometimes when I just want to disappear, I disappear. And I know that I can't say things to like my friends where I feel like it'll come from a place with, of understanding. So I, I can't really say it to them. So I can't say, hey, not feeling too well, I'm gonna go off the grid, go in my little bubble. It'll be, oh, why are you going away? Do you wanna talk about it? And sometimes I just, it's really nothing that's going on in my life. I just need to recharge myself. And that that's how I do it. it, it and sometimes I can't say, I can't say it to them because they would never understand. So that's one thing that I wish I can say that I can't. Okay. And the answer is, Interesting. I wish, I, no, honestly, I wish I had more boldness to say. I, I wish I was more bold like you to like say the things and not hold anything back. It's a gift and a curse. Oh, more a curse than gift, I'm sure. All right. It's All right. Let's, let's move right on. I'm so happy I've evolved because the things that I want to say, I can't. <laughs> Oh, is this what you wish to say, but you can't? <laughs> How art imitates life. Let's move on to the next question, shall we? Our next question on our list here is, ooh, tell me about a time you almost died. Oh, look, death, your favorite topic. Are you sure these questions are random? Because they don't they seem are fun. Big random. Question, okay. They don't seem that fun because... They're, they're random. I'm not choosing them. I, as I said, I have this generator. I'm clicking it, and these are the numbers coming up. Repeat I, the question. Tell me about a time you almost died. I have multiple near-death experiences, but you could go first. So one summer, um, I went to camp, and um, they took us to this lake. Um, Oh, Lake Watuga. I don't know where that is. But that's where we went for the summer. Um, my parents sent me away. I'm sure they wanted to um, do something. Who knows? I don't know what they wanted to do. They just sent me away. And uh, we had to do some sort of like water activity, right? Okay. So they took us to um, like this kind of diving pier sort of type thingy. Uh -huh. And we're all just walking and talking, just shooting the breeze about anything, you know, just talking about being in school. You know, I just thought it was no more conversations. All of a sudden, um, I got pushed into the water. Well, we all did. They all collectively like pushed us all into the water, right? 
And I think I died for like um, five seconds because I went all the way down to the bottom of this like lake creek and I don't even know how I got back up, but I know I passed out. Yikes. Um, I woke up um, on the shoreline and they wanted to know if I was okay. And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. And apparently that was their um, way to test to see if we can swim. I see. So there was different stages that they were going to put us in based on how well we got back up. And I didn't come back up so easily, as, so as you, you can got, tell. You got stuck with the floaties, basically. Um, there were different stages. They were like <laughs> shark, um, piranha. You were know. you a tuna fish? I was a guppy for the rest of the Aww. summer. Because I refuse to learn how to swim. The guppies just stayed and plopped around the shoreline. <laughs> and um, that was pretty much it for me. So Ooh, that is funny. And I, I never came back from that. Like I literally died for like five seconds and then came back up coughing. Well, fast forward, do you know how to swim now? I have a little PTSD with that. Like I I went away on a girl's trip recently and everybody jumped in and I was so happy to jump in because, you know, I grew up in Grenada. I loved the water. Yeah. I always wanted to swim, but that really like took a toll and scared me. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I could not jump off this yacht into five feet of water. I could not jump into it. It took me a good 30 minutes and a man who had to, I had to like straddle his shoulders just so I can get into the water. <laughs> See. I said, if you get in, I'll get in. And he jumped in. He's like, now you got to come in. I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> you know how you know how I go. I'm evolving. Mm -hmm. So um, I had to like climb on his shoulder and then like ease myself down in, and I made it. The answer is you survived. And that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was an experience. Good for you. Did you almost die somewhere? Multiple times, multiple oh, wow. times. Wow, oh, oh whoa. Boy, I can rattle a list. So when I was uh, younger, I consumed a kerosene, thinking it was water. Uh, immediately had to go to the hospital, get a blood transfusion. That was just off the rip. Um, let's see, what else? Almost drowned in high school, learning how to swim. Drowning, not a fun feeling uh, for those who have experienced it. Uh, but fast forward, I know how to swim now, so I'm very confident and happy about that. Uh, oh, look at you. Back in 2011, 2012, I had a wild night for my birthday, which involved a lot of uh, misguided driving while under the influence. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that resulted in me successfully flipping over a car with uh, two other people inside and uh, me having to uh, get arrested and go to jail. Sorry, go to holdings uh, for driving with a DUI. And that was a whole chapter of my life, near death. Very, very fun stuff. Uh, let's see what other near death experiences. Oh, there's one time where I was driving on the highway with my friend after we were making videos for YouTube. Almost fell asleep behind the wheel. Uh, oh my God. So you just like playing with death, huh? I call myself very blessed. Mm. You know? um, yeah, there's been, you know, I went hiking, I was on a mountain. Almost fell off, you know. So I mean, me and death. Um, I've I've flirted with death a couple of times. You know, we've went out for drinks. We've had conversations, but I decided, you know what? I think you like that. I think we you don't, like we it. We don't. We don't mesh. We don't mesh. We just don't. Um, so I blocked death on on my everything because we used to talk, but not anymore. Now I'm much more safe. So yes, that's the multiple times that I have almost died. And well, here we are. And thank I'm glad goodness. you made it. Yep. I'm glad you made it too, because if not, this episode would be very awkward. On account, we wouldn't be here. Yep. All right. Let's go to the next question. This should be a, a light. This should be a, a softball. Uh, the question is, are you happy with the people you surround yourself with? Why or why not? I am happy with the people that I surround myself with because... Um, they make me strive to be better. Mm 
mm-hmm. you know, strive to, to do more positive outlooks there because sometimes I can, it's so easy to take myself to a negative space. I don't know why. Yeah. Like my life is good. And for some strange reason, my brain likes to think of worst case scenarios. Yes, we know. And that usually time. involves death for some reason. I don't know why. I, well, for me, death for me stems from being alone. Okay. That's, that's basically it. When I was I younger, just I, when I was younger, I alone. Fear of death too, so I get it. Yeah, so I, I, I haven't overcome it. I, I didn't have a fear of death growing up. You know, I was carefree, but now that I get older, I'm like second guessing everything. But I, I do like that I am around positive people who help me not think so much and try to... Um, put myself in a better headspace in that yeah. regard. I also like the fact that even though um, for me, it's, 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 I don't want to say there's a competitive type of like environment, but it helps me to make myself better. Like if I see somebody else doing that, I'm like, well, shit, I can do it too. What the hell? Like, it makes me want to better myself. You know what I, you know what I mean? So, like yeah, in that kind of aspect. So These people yeah. push you to be better. You know, so yeah. you surround yourself by people who are constantly pushing you to like evolve and get to the next level of who you like to be. Exactly. And for that, I say, well, Roby, I'm so flattered. Um, so I don't know how many times we talk, though, I'm because sorry? you don't know who you miss. We don't really talk that much, do we? We talk. About- I get left on. I get left on red a lot. Oh, oh, really? You. Should we go through the text messages of you leaving me? Doesn't even I'm matter. not gonna I'm not gonna bore the audience. It with is it. hashtag not a contest. Okay. Uh let's it's, just it's a competition, that's what it is. Oh, uh, it <laughs> always is with you, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, uh do we, do we even like each other? I don't I'm I like sure. you, don't do that. I'm not sure. We like each other, don't do that. Do we? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't answer the question. We we do like each other. Oh, you're talking about the question. Yeah. I'm about to. Uh, okay. Well, remember on the last episode um, or the other episode, I was talking about how I tend to have some toxic friends. Uh, thankfully, mm. you know, I think I have a healthy mix of like some friends that are toxic and other friends that are like really good. I think that healthy balance allows me to realize the type of person that I am and the type of people I want around. And though I have, you know, my friends that have the toxic moments, uh, they're good in other cases. I just am able to decipher the bad from the good. Um, and those type of friendships are all, you know, they all have different levels to them, you know. I- I've explained on this show before about my concept of uh, friendships as it relates to wood. So, you know, depending on the strength of the relationship or depending on what type of relationship it is, uh, whether it's just a genuine one, mutually beneficial, whatever, uh, those are the type of people that I curate in my circle and realize, all right, this person I need to keep at a distance. This person is, you know, someone that I value that I would like in my life and kind of take it from there. So it all, it all depends on the relationship that you have with that person or the relationship that I have with the people that are in my life. Yeah. It all depends. All right, let's get to another question, shall we? Oh, how, how are you feeling with these questions? I know that I know they've been kind of back and forth, but um, um yeah, I, I love it. Oh, all right, good. All right, next question is: Are you ready? I'm ever ready. What are you purpose? What are you purposefully ignoring, even though you know you should probably deal with it? Ooh. Hello. Now we're cutting deep. What are you neglecting for him? Roby? Um, I would say my health. Okay. Honest answer. Love it. I'm I'm purposely ignoring it. I know that there's certain things that I I need to do and I should eat better and drink more water, but I don't do it. I get up. I eat munchkins. The Dunkin' Donuts lady gives me extra munchkins sometimes. Think that I don't need. I drink. 
drink as soon as I get home. I just got barnyard in a can. So summer's litty. Mm-hmm. Um, I had that, and this is why I, I tell, I think I tell you most often that I need to stop buying food. Yes. Like, just ordering food because I have a stock full of food in my fridge that that are good, healthy alternatives healthy. that I can cook, but, but I don't, I just don't, not that I don't have the time to, cause I have the time, not that I am super busy or I just don't want to sometimes I want pizza and I need to say no. I need to say no. I don't tell myself no. I purposely ignore that that voice to say no. So I the need irony. to. The irony of it all. Because you are quick to say no to other people. But you can't say no to yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get a tabernacle? There it is. Carry on, friend. What you were saying? I think that's it. I'll just wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. yep. <laughs> that, that just struck a nerve. <laughs> I'm just saying. I just think you it's chose ironic. violence. I didn't charge violence. I chose truth. And I just think it's ironic. That's all. But it's good that you're reflecting on these things. And, and no is my favorite word, too. So. Yes, we know this. You've said this on multiple episodes. Wow. Did you I? have. You have. I'm just saying. Uh, for me, something that I'm purposely ignoring. Um, I'm ignoring the fact that, you know, I still need to deal with uh, uh, my level of loneliness and how that adds to, like, my anxiety. Um, That's something that I know that I put off a lot and that that's something that I can certainly face more. Uh, I realize that when it comes to me, intimacy is very important for me. uh, And it doesn't have to just be, like, physical. I mean... Yes, one of my love languages is touch. But I also have to learn, or I also have to constantly keep reminding myself that putting myself first is of the utmost importance. And um, yeah, loneliness is something that uh, could simply be remedied by being able to actively like focus on me, you know what I mean? So I know that's something that I put on the back burner, but it's certainly something I could work on more and even even i know there's sometimes where i say that you know i'm actively working on it and i know that i'm not um because i'm trying to eliminate the word try from my vocabulary but uh i could there's so much things i could do better um but i don't want to be too hard on myself either so it's a catch-22 in that regard All right, I think we have time for a couple more questions. So let's get to it. Our next question is, oh baby, this question you may like. If you had a million dollars to give to any charity, what type of charity would you give it to? No, it doesn't have to be the whole million. Yes, the whole million, one million. No, I I mean, I say that, I. If you had I a say that. Go on. I don't think you understand what I'm trying to say. No, so, so, talk. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm, I'm saying if I can split the million up into different charities, that's what I mean. I don't think the question but, specifies that. It just says see, if you had a million dollars to give to any charity, what type of charity would you give it to? One. You know what? Ugh. I'm reading the question as it's stated. Yeah, stand your what ass. is this? All right. Um, um, the charity that I would give back to um, is dear, near and dear to my heart because I work with them. Um, it's from the island where my father is from. It's called the Grenada Health Aid Organization. Nice. Um, they, because you know, in Grenada, well, in most uh, Caribbean countries that even though we do have healthcare facilities and hospitals there, sometimes the procedure that needs to be actually done on the island can't be done there. So they usually have to fly to a bigger island or the United States. Um, 
So in that regard, this is why I also got into podiatry as well too, because you know, in the African-American community, diabetes runs rampant and a lot of people are losing their limbs. So I want to be one of the few that helps with prevention of limb loss and limb salvage so we can help those, you know, because losing a limb is psychologically and physically debilitating. You know, you've been walking your whole life and then you have to lose your feet or your knee or some lower extremity due to a disease that is manageable is detrimental. But Grenada Health Aid Organization, they send gauze, wound care supplies, um, try to send machinery to like the countryside of hospitals and healthcare facilities just so they can have something because they don't have easy access to it. Even in 2021, even with a medical school on the campus, there's still some kind of socioeconomic disparity there where they just can't get the needs of getting the supplies. So this organization helps uh, to carry supplies over there. So if I could, I would. That's pretty dope. I didn't know about that. Yeah, you should come. They, I, they, we do an annual walkathon in June. Ooh, I love walks. I think right in Prospect Park. Yeah, just to raise money. That's what's up. Yep. That's a great cause. For me, I've always been an advocate. Um, okay, so I shouldn't say that, but I, when it comes to charity, I any charity that caters to the homeless. Um, you know, when it comes to the homeless, I have like a soft spot for those who are like out in the streets, they're not being taken care of, um, you know, our local government or anything like that doesn't really put any type of money towards um, homeless initiatives. I mean, there's shelters and stuff like that, but I mean, if you've been in a shelter or if you've witnessed shelters in the city, especially, it is not great. Um, so if there's a way that I can donate a million dollars to just homeless initiatives throughout the country that helps people with like basic needs and stuff like that. I would love to see that money go towards that and like actual tangible solutions instead of just going into a void. Um, yeah, because I feel like, you know, of all the things in this world, uh, having a roof over your head should be, a per should be a right and not a privilege. Yeah, shelters is one of our basic needs. It is, amongst anything, you know. So not to, not to be funny or go off on a tangent, but I did see a meme, um, which was so funny. Um, one of somebody that I went to high school with posted it. Um, whenever I see homeless people, I only give it to the colored people. And I just had to shake my head. I mean, <laughs> you too? <laughs> I, 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 this been, look, I mean, if you live in New York City, you know about the, the subway stations. There'd be times where I'm in a charitable mood and I would give somebody like a dollar or something like that and not be too skeptical about how they use their money. Uh, you know, because at the end of the day, it's like, hey, they're out here. If they really need it, then, you know, ideally they'll be using it for the right reasons. But I can't dictate that. I can't say, hey, look, here's $20. I'm going to follow you and make sure you spend it the right way. Like, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's just like, you know, these people... Some people really do need help. Other people are just out here perpetrating whatever and panhandling. Yep. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like so fun. We all we all need something from something. So, I mean, if we can't help, who else can? You know, it's weird. It's weird to live in a place where there's like the tale of two cities. You know, um, where you literally have like the rich like stepping over the poor. It's it's a sucky sight to see. But um, yeah, that's where I put my money into for me. All right, we are at the point of the episode where we're going to do a bonus question. Burr, 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 burr. And Roby's looking like, what the fuck is this nigga talking about? Well, I'll tell you. Um, I'm now giving the choice back to you, Roby. And now you have the chance to choose a number between 1 and 196. And then you have to answer that question. And now we'll do the same. So no random number generator, just you choosing a number and you committed to that question. So go for it. 95. Ooh, 95. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, and the question is, what were the three most important turning points in your life? <sighs> At the deep ones again, huh? I think it's a ploy set up by you. 
Not a ploy. You chose the question. I'm reading it as as it's stated. Did I say? I said 94. You said 95. The three most important turning points of my life. Okay. The, the first one I would say is when I was a child and um, I, like I said, I grew up in Grenada, but uh, it, was a, it was a lot of stigma against me. This is, this is like a double-edged sword for me. I went to Grenada, I went to school there. I was chastised for being one American. Mm. So I was already looked at like I was privileged and I was far from it. <laughs> <laughs> Two, apparently I was very fair skinned. I wasn't light skinned, but I was just fair. I don't understand. It, it was a lot of still a tone of colorism still within, you yeah, know, absolutely. the community. So I was kind of ostracized and uh, young when I was like five. And let's fast forward to where I'm like 11 when I had to come back to school in Brooklyn. And guess what? I got chastised as the black Jamaican girl because I had a strong, a strong, like I grew, I had a strong Grenadian accent and I, I try to shake it sometimes, but it comes out. A lot of people know, can tell that I still have a, a Caribbean accent when I talk sometimes, okay. but it was super, like, I was like, oh my God, why you go, oh, gee, that thing ugly, like, that's how <laughs> I normally talk. That, for the first five years, five, 10 years of my life, that's how my normal conversations was and nobody, you know, looked at me funny because that's, that's was my environment. And then fast forward, I'm in East New York, Brooklyn. Everyone's like, yo, Jamaican girl, what's going on? What made it worse was I just went up there and I became student of the month within the month. So I had a lot of jealousy. I was jumped after school. Yikes. Um, yeah. So I think that was one of my first turning points where it, it turned me to be like, extra cold and I could do for myself. I think that's one of the reasons why I grew up to be so self-sufficient, so independent. And I guess, I don't want to say secretive, but to myself, because I felt like if I opened up more, I was going to get teased more. I was going to get judged more. I'll get ridiculed more. You know what uh, I mean? Yes. Um, second point was when I... Went to college. That was my first like adult thing. Like my parents just was like, here you go on your own. So I did everything on my own. My parents had, didn't have to pay for anything. I, I got a bunch of like scholarships and grants, but then every other loan that I took out was in my name. Like I know other people had like Parent Plus loans. Um, they had uh, all of this. I had to work. I worked at Sears and the dining hall and I was still pushing a, a science major. So that was big for me, you know, getting my car, getting my, getting my first time, getting my own apartment. I moved off campus as soon as I could. I felt, I felt grown, but not grown. That was another pivotal point in my life. I was hanging out late. I was doing whatever I want to. I, I didn't have a curfew. I didn't have to answer to nobody. You know, my mom, you know, we spoke on the phone, but it wasn't like, yeah, mom, I'm about to go to the rat for uh, dollar beers, or I'm going to go to the ice house to chill with some kappas. I, I, I can't, <laughs> like, I couldn't, I couldn't, it's not like I'm just going to say, yeah, I'm chewing the breeze, but that was a, that was a crucial moment where I needed to, to be on my own. So I can, that only just furthered me to, to I guess, the independence in me now. So I, I was able to move around and still be efficient by myself there's three i don't I, i'm evolving i'm waiting for the third part i guess because I, I moved again like i've been moving around i did my clinicals in arizona i spent about a good two years out there and then i'm back home in new york and now i'm in miami doing podiatry so the third is yet to come i'm still waiting for that i think that that pivotal moment is where you know, hopefully I find love, you know, become a mom, 
you know, those, those are important aspects in one's life that I'm hoping that would actually come for me. But again, if it doesn't, I'm not going to hold my breath, but I got a solid two for right now. Okay. All right. That's good. I like that. I like the fact that you could identify those turning points. I'm going to choose a question now. My question is 87. And this question is... That was so corny, 87. Uh, is it corny? Is it? <laughs> Actually, no. Okay, I'm only going to re-choose this question because I feel like we've answered this question. Wait a minute! Okay, okay. okay. Let me read the question and then you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, the question is, when you're gone, what... When you're gone when you want to be remembered for, or what do you want to be remembered for? I feel like we answered this question already. When? In a past episode. I'm serious. I don't remember. Oh my gosh. But next, go ahead. You get to I choose, will choose because, another question. because you are king and- That's not how this works. I, I am a subordinate and I- Please stop saying words. That, that, that <laughs> are true, okay? All true. Not These true. are all true. This is the dynamic. 160. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> what school subjects do, do you like and hate the most when you're in school? This is such a... You already have all this good shit and I get all the deep shit. I, You've been I, giving me deep shit. Just deep, 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 deep shit. I'm sorry, but these are like the questions. This, this, nothing has the, been less than six feet. These are the questions as they're being put on this list. Uh, real quick, uh, my favorite subjects in school. I'm sorry, there is a, <laughs> as I'm recording this, there is a insect that is harassing me and I don't know how to so, do it. Sounds like a pivotal moment. <sighs> so my school subjects that I liked, um, I liked science, I liked English, uh, I liked, um, you know, technology and stuff like that. I did not like math. Was not a fan of anything that was math related or numbers and yeah pretty simple question and answer i'm sorry will that you had the deep stuff but hey what are you gonna do um that's fine it's a it's a reason why i was giving these answers because again i'm evolving i don't let people know about me or anything like that but i know this is cliche to say and when people people are like oh you have to say it's not true but cool as fuck and i'm actually i'm really funny like if you we make hang me laugh. out oh you make we, me like laugh. shut up like if we really <laughs> hang out but i am a tough cookie to crack but i am evolving this is why i am doing this podcast and you know i'm on this platform so i can let other people know that we don't have to be so closed off you know because there are people like me but it's okay to let the to crack open your shell just a little bit you know? Correct. And this is what you did on this episode. I'm proud of you. Thank you. And this won't be the last time. <sighs> oh, yeah. It will not be the last time. You're not getting away with it that easily. Anyway, well, uh, <laughs> so that is about it. I hope all of you have learned a little bit more about me. I don't feel too In this good. episode. Well, <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what? You know what? <laughs> um, that's just what it is, okay? Um, I can fly. I'll do with that later. Anyway, um, thank you all for joining us on today's episode. Once again, I hope you all learned a little bit more about me and Rove. And if you want to learn more things, we're going to have another episode like this where we answer personal questions. Hopefully not too deep. But um, yeah, make sure to follow us on our podcast platform, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure to follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, follow the podcast, follow me and we respectfully slide in our DMs, say hello or nah, just follow, or just, you know, say anything else that might be nice. Or ask us a question. Hmm? And you can ask questions and send them over to sophigpodcast.gmail.com or you can ask us questions in our DMs uh, privately and then Rovi and or myself will read them or leave you on read. I mean, either way, it's going to be a good time. Uh, um, so, yes. Uh, so, yeah, that is that. Uh, and that's all I got for today's episode, y'all.
hope you guys have a great week ahead and yeah sift through the bullshit yeah hope this was fun all right thanks for listening everyone thanks for listening y'all we'll check y'all next time bye-bye bye definitely sophisticated ignorance and i'm fucking with it